Welcome back. It is uh, Friday, the 7th of February, uh, a day late, mainly because, well, me, uh, I was in Barcelona yesterday at a meetup uh, organized by the lovely recruiters of Barcelona. Um, so honestly, didn't have time to, to reschedule a show. But we are back for the Sourcing Talk Challenge talk show. Uh, we have Sophia back. Uh, so Yay. welcome back, Sophia. And we have Aaron back all the way from the other side of the pond for, well, from our point of view. Um, we, uh, we talked a little bit about last time what we wanted to, to, to press them on. Um, and it's also why we got Sophia back. Um, but for anybody who's new, who does not know what this talk show is about, uh, Sourcing Challenge in general, um, Aaron and mine, Sadir, have been up a couple of years now. Uh, it started out with um, us interviewing other sourcers uh, and also some of the tools that we like using and finding out what it is. That's been running for a couple of years and we try to continue doing that. Uh, Sophia was one of those people that we actually interviewed and ended up becoming really good friends with and business partners with. Um, and we decided uh, instead of just interviewing other people, let's uh, have something where once a week we talk about subjects that we either think was interesting that's happened or just something we think is interesting and that we want to talk about. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, just um, to kick things off, I uh, talked a bit about the talk show. Uh, the talk show, uh, well, the talk show, the interview show, the interview show will be coming back again. Um, Amazing Hiring, who's been a good partner for us in the past, has decided to, uh, to help us out uh, and actually work with us to, uh, to sponsor the second season. So um, I will be going back and, uh, and starting to interview some more people and get that out again. I do have one episode that I still have that I shot last year that will be coming up as soon as I can get that finished, uh, which takes it up to 42. I kind of like that number that if it's one season, that is 42 episodes. Um, and uh, so, yeah, with that. But also in uh, while we talk about Amazing Aaron, um, Aaron and I uh, are doing partly what the Sourcing Challenge originally idea was, was to do Sourcing Challenges, hence the name. Um, and part of that is the online hackathons. So we're doing one in, well, that's going to be two weeks from now, on the 20th of, uh, of February. Uh, it's at 1 p.m. Eastern time, so U.S. time zone. And we are hoping for lots of American sourcers, sourcing teams, uh, anybody in the world. But, you know, if you're in Europe or Asia, it's uh, for, for the first time ever, it's a bit inconvenient in your time zone because we really wanted to hit all those American ones. So if you haven't already signed up, do so. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you all there. If you haven't been at a hackathon yet, uh, go and have a look at, uh, at um, Jan Sourcing Games. There's a section there that's called Amazing Hiring. So some of the past hackathons questions are there, so you can try that out. Uh, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be an hour uh, of uh, us having fun, giving you questions. And uh, yeah, uh, testing your skills for how good you are compared to other sources around the world. So uh, I think that's for the housekeeping. Uh, one more thing. Um, Aaron and Sophia, unlike me, actually like writing shit once in a while. Um, and uh, Aaron did a thing. Uh, Aaron has an article on uh, sourcecon.com this week. Um, so if you have not checked that out, you definitely should. Uh, if you don't understand it, uh, don't worry, most of us don't. Uh, but it's just, it tells you a little bit about the, the mind of Aaron Lintz and how he thinks and the kind of things that uh, you can expect when you work with Aaron, uh, as I have a couple of times. Um, but also the kind of training that Aaron does is, is that's the kind of level. Um, so have a look at that. It's, I think it's the latest article at the moment. Of course, I'm going to put the link in the description as well. Um, go to sourcecon.com, uh, have a look at Aaron's article about I think it was LinkedIn this time. Um, yeah, LinkedIn recruiter. Exactly. Hack, yeah. <coughs> had, to, had, to, had to give some credit to LinkedIn. Um, but I, I take metro, I take a lot of, I'll take a lot of credit away too. But, uh, yeah. and, and if, if you are. Uh, if they want, pay, want to pay for it, you know, they'll, uh, they'll give us the tools so we're, we get to use it. Exactly. And if you saw Sophia on the last show two weeks ago, you, uh, you knew she was talking about the, the third uh, installment of her trilogy on uh, being a, a one-person recruitment team at Toca Boca. Uh, that is out. I put the link to the third installment in the original show notes, but I'll put it here as well. So you can see uh, if, you were, if you didn't see it come up and you were uh, anxiously waiting for the, 
for the culmination of uh, of the whole saga. Uh, it's there um, to see, you know, kind of she ties it all up. So yeah, that was for the Kanao's bleeding piece. Um, and yeah, like Sophia, one of the reasons that that we wanted to to get you back, um, other than you know just having fun, uh, is we talk a lot about this, and I think like for all three of us, it's it's something we definitely agree on. We we might do things differently, but one thing we do agree is on LinkedIn never being the only tool we use or the only place we use, but also rarely being the first place we go to. Um, and and you had a you had a run in with some people around, you know, something that you wrote <laughs> about like not necessarily starting off on LinkedIn or, or looking at other places on LinkedIn. So yeah, tell us a bit about that. Well, I wanted to, to encourage people to use other sources than LinkedIn. I mean, and um, I wrote something about that and I, I called it the Sophia's LinkedIn challenge. Um, we're basically asking people to once a week, so one of the days that you're working with sourcing, to not use LinkedIn as your primary source. Basically go elsewhere looking for candidates. There's various comments people thought, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm already doing it. I'm, I'm up for the challenge. Um, and then there was some people kind of going, okay, but you know, LinkedIn works. Why should I go elsewhere? And I'm going, yeah, because you'll find different people. Um, and I'm, and I tried to explain a bit more what I was going on about saying that you use it as a use somewhere else as a primary source and then LinkedIn being your secondary source. So once you have the people that you're interested in, then you're, of course you double check them against LinkedIn and they were going, well, then you're just going back to LinkedIn anyway. So why should you go elsewhere? And it's, uh, <laughs> and to me, so I thought like I'd like to once and for all kind of clarify what, I and you and Aaron and everyone else means by saying get off LinkedIn and what we mean is don't log out and never log in again and don't even like if I find a person called Mark Lundgren somewhere else I'll find him on his website or I'll find him on GitHub or I'll find him on Stack Overflow wherever I find is Mark Lundgren of course I'm going to put that name into LinkedIn and see what other information I can find about him <laughs> on LinkedIn. But I think a lot of people, what they kind of do is they'll find people on LinkedIn and they have a list of people and then they might go and check them out on GitHub. They might check them out on Stack Overflow. They might use Amazing Hiring to do that. Um, but I think when you do it that way around, you're missing out on a lot of people because what I've experienced when I've gone, let's say GitHub first, I have the list of people that I want to look at. So just like you would when you have your list of LinkedIn people, check their, their GitHub accounts. I'll go, here's my GitHub people, let's check their LinkedIn accounts. And what happens when you have it that way around is you'll find people who created a LinkedIn account, let's say five years ago and never logged in again. So all it says is Mark Lundgren, developer, nothing else. Yeah. You would not have found that person if your search had started on LinkedIn. Then you might have the other person, when you find their LinkedIn profile, it looked like they quit a job in 2016 and they haven't worked since. <laughs> exactly. Again, that person just stopped updating their LinkedIn profile. It doesn't mean they haven't worked in 2016. It doesn't mean they don't exist. It doesn't mean you can't get hold of them, but you have more information about them because you found them elsewhere first. So you, you find these other people that you wouldn't have found or that would have been in a complete different order uh, if you would have done the search on LinkedIn. And also, let's say if you go meetup group first, you might find people who have joined the group because they're interested in a programming language, but they, you know, they haven't updated their LinkedIn profile. They might be in a group about Golang. I mean, yeah, I mean, especially like we've done a lot of Golang and a lot of that is it, it, it might even, we still have people like, Oh no, I never put that. I didn't put it on my LinkedIn profile one because they didn't necessarily, they didn't think themselves proficient enough to actually be something that they want to put it on. And, or two, they don't really care whether it's on their LinkedIn. Like exactly. if they, if it's not there when they set up their profile, they're not going to add it uh, because that's only recruiters doing that. Um, so for them, it was like, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, but absolutely, 
we had a lot of that as well where what we you what we what i would use is like i need people who know one thing and another thing like i need that combination mm -hmm. um and yeah i could look for that like people on linkedin that has both but it's much more powerful for me to look at people who are in meetup groups specifically about those two subjects exactly. so they know go and they know aws but so me knowing like if they actually take time out to join a meetup group and like ideally actually go to the meetups that's much more powerful indicator for me than if they have the right kind of keyword on linkedin exactly because the first thing when they when you have an interest in something new the first thing you do is not go to linkedin and update your profile that's not what you do but you start engaging in meetup groups or in facebook groups or in slack communities or whatever you start engaging about that new interest your first thought isn't yeah, I must update my LinkedIn profile, this new interest I have. You know, you just do it. And the, that's not in your mind, especially not if changing jobs is not at the top of your list of things to do. I, I don't even, I can't remember what skills I put on my LinkedIn, to be honest. I know I put bullying as a fluent language. I probably haven't. <laughs> But because it's a language. I don't think I got Boolean and one there. Not as a skill, but as a language. You can put whatever you want. That's the, the that's part of the joke with that. And like you can, you know, I I could endorse you for pancake making as a skill. Yeah, and I'm like show up. and then you endorse me, and we'll have fun. <laughs> I am good. And at I don't, pancakes, and I don't think anybody's going to search for it. But it's like you know. But if you were in a meetup group about pancake making, I would take it serious. Exactly, and and that's what I'm saying. So I'm not saying don't look someone up on LinkedIn, <gasps> Band. but it's kind of try, get a list of people together based on somewhere else. I mean, what, um, specifically, I work with my wife now and she's a sorcerer as well. And uh, one of the so similar kind of things, she doesn't start on LinkedIn uh, because it's, you know, makes no sense for what we're doing. But every platform has a specific part that it plays. <laughs> Um, and for what we're doing, we need people who speak good English, mm -hmm. which is hard to gaze unless you talk to them or you see what they've been writing. Um, and LinkedIn, a lot of the times, like, yes, you can go in and see, okay, what, what did they indicate that their language proficiency is? But you can also just check, what are they writing in their job? Like when they write about what they're doing or what their job is, what have they been writing? And if that's Eastern European or Southern European, just like when you can see, it's like, have they written in English? How do they write? Do they have a medium? Are they writing a medium? Do they have their own blogs and things like that? That's where she gazes that. So that's what she spends a lot of times. Like she's like, I don't want to waste somebody's time convincing them to talk to me to like that they might want to relocate. And then I have a call with them and they can barely string two words together in English. It's like, she's I like, I, I just don't, I want to make sure that I don't, you know, give but, them but too much that wrong. reminds me of another interesting thing with languages on LinkedIn. I don't know whether at least a lot of Swedes, when you put your languages, they don't put Swedish on there. No, or no. they put the languages like on top of their native language. So a lot of countries do the same the native thing. Languages. Yeah. So it's like you can't even do that. You can't even search for, okay, I'm going to need somebody who knows Swedish. You're mm. going to exclude so many Swedish people if you're only looking for people who have put Swedish as they know it because there's just so many who who know it but they just thinking about oh what other languages do i when linkedin know, is saying it's like well they would have their profile written in swedish and i'm like no i don't this think so because why would they yeah i mean they, they have that option right so you can put your profile in several languages yeah i've got mine and, in too yeah i was gonna say i think people do it but i i would say it's it's far from the majority of people who do it right it's i don't even like i just, I, I, I wanted to, but I couldn't be bothered. Don't you so have just, one in Danish, Mark? No. No, I don't. <laughs> I know you don't. I've, I've worked, like, my career in total has been, like, what, two, three years in Denmark. The rest of it has been, you know, English-speaking or German. So it's like I've, I've never had, never needed a Danish, a Danish-facing profile. Yeah. But going elsewhere... And looking for information about you, I might discover that you speak fluent Danish. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the whole that conversation thing. starter that yeah. that separates you from the everyone else, you know. Yeah, yeah. and 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 on, on what I want to encourage people to do is, is, like I'm saying, perhaps 
one day a week, whether it's Monday or Wednesday or Friday or whatever day you feel we, like. We have the, kind of we have the Facebook post. community. What was it? LinkedIn Free Fridays? It was a couple of years ago. Somebody set it up as a joke and we all jumped on it in the recruitment community and then it died out. The group is still there. I know because I'm a member of it, but it was like, it was like LinkedIn Free Friday. And just like, look, one, one day a week, might as well be Friday where, you know, nobody really works the whole day. Like just stay off of LinkedIn. Um, and it, yeah, people were like, oh yeah, we're going to do it. And then I think it just died out. I just the wanna, group is I still just, there. And there was some good, there was got good pieces there as well. I just want to encourage people to kind of turn it around. So I know people look people up on GitHub and I know people look people up in other sources, but just those say the one, the ones that you normally use as your secondary source, try using that as your primary source once and LinkedIn as your secondary. Yeah. And that's kind of my point because you'll find different people. You'll come across people that you've not seen before because I mean, there's so many others. You've gone through this LinkedIn search result and you just feel like I've just seen these people over and over again i know these people you feel like you'd walk into town and you'd see a face you feel like i know you they'd be like no i don't like, oh, i've seen you on linkedin uh, you just feel like you know these people just because they just scroll past them eight million times already and turning it around going somewhere else first is you're going to be like i don't know that guy i've not seen him before it's just going to make a difference and it's going to change things up and and that's what I want people to do. No, and, and if you had that, you know, if you had that 10 people, that people that you always try to get in contact with and you've been chasing for the last 10 years because that's the people you want, right? Mm -hmm. Check out their Twitter profile. Who are they following? Like maybe there's somebody following that they're all following. Who else is following that person? Like what's the, what's the kind of influencers that they would be looking at? Like is there specific magazines? Like, you know, where are these people hanging out? Are they community groups? Like... I know Aaron is one of the people who love going into all of these community software, you know, where they actually, you know, the support software, the groups behind it, mainly because the software behind it is appalling and you can get the membership list really easy. Uh, but a lot of these tech people, like, you know, they, they, compl they, they either complain about the software that they're using or, you know, they talk about, like, how can we make this better or, you know, things like that. And that's where those people hang out. And most of the time it's like, you know, there you'll see those connections. Uh, GitHub is not just about what repositories there is. It's also about what, you know, what repositories have they forked? What, which ones are they starring? Who are they following? Like exactly. this person is really important. Who's following them? Who is he following? You know, who are the people that are kind of like, you start seeing those networks. But also the important thing to remember with things like GitHub isn't just like, oh, they have repositories written in JavaScript. <laughs> There to go in and read the README files, what does that piece of code they've written, what does it do? What problems does it solve? How does that relate to what you do and what your company does and what product you have? And, and that's what you need to look at. So it's not just that. And I love somebody called it buzzword bingo. And I love that. <laughs> that's not what it's about. It's also kind of, okay, this person knows JavaScript, but generally what does this person use JavaScript for? What kind of problems does this person solve using JavaScript? Or what kind of repositories are they starring or forking they're interested in? And what do those repositories do? Uh, not just it's JavaScript. I have a JavaScript job for you. Come join us. Because <laughs> yeah. it's well, all you the same. Else. <laughs> <laughs> There's no difference, right? So, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, conferences. Mm. Don't forget conferences. Like, you know, no. again, if you want to go... There's sourcing, there's advanced sourcing training that Sophia and I are doing. And then once you've taken every training in the world and you think you know everything, then you go in and take like Aaron's training and you start completely from scratch and think that you're a, like, you know, you're a baby and you know nothing. Uh, but that's the kind of thing. It's like, yes, you can get all the speakers at a conference. Um, but, you know, we used to like, how do we find all of these conference, you know, people that go to conferences? It used to be like people were stupid enough to leave Excel sheets all over the internet. They're not anymore. But there's ways, and uh, yeah, Aaron has spent the yeah. last four years figuring out what, what those ways are. So uh, yeah, definitely, and and that's the kind of thing. It's like, I don't think Aaron spends more time on LinkedIn than he has, absolutely has to. But you know, again, yeah. these people these people show up on LinkedIn. You just found them something completely different. 
Yeah, I was to say, so, so last time we spoke, Sophia brought up and, and I read her productivity on her blog and it was, and she wrote just a, just a tiny little piece, she used it, that you could use Zapier to get um, <laughs> new people who join a meetup group. And so I built it and I was like, oh, it actually works. This is awesome. And it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's really clever. I mean, so yeah, yeah. So you have to, uh, let me ask you this to be sure, but you have to be a member of the group right to then you'd see the people yeah yeah, yeah okay. so, so i started doing that and i was like and and so i tied that into the well i, I wrote about that in in that article on source con and it and well, was super about, smart because i said <laughs> super smart which was no joke that was a hundred percent because i didn't know that you could do that and and uh so i learned i learned something from you and uh, and and i still think you're super smart now you got an extra star um but uh, yeah, it's, it's just what I do is, um, you know, I use LinkedIn Recruiter as our uh, C CRM. And actually, just the other day, somebody, as I thought was evil, but I got this list of people from a, a conference again, and somebody messaged somebody back, one of the recruiters back, and was was kind of terrible, was was one of these, I am, do, don't you know who I am, <laughs> kind of messages. I am Kaiser Sose. <laughs> Yeah, and it was this was small batch sourcing. This was it was with even on LinkedIn Recruiter, we're sending uh, an attached PDF that I made that was really sharp. It was like because that kind of stands out. Actually, you can you can uh, add attachments. You can't you can do twenty five at a time, but you know it, you still have to import it. You can't have the attachment on the template. It's stupid. Um, but um, yeah, it was just so now I'm going back and tagging. I have a tag for speakers so that they, so they can, we can small batch those people and, you know. Make them feel extra special. They can feel extra special. And it's, and it's not all of them. I think some of them more than others, but um, yeah, I'm sure I've, I've, I've ego tripped that myself. Um, <laughs> I dare I get the same message with someone else, but you know, it, it you know, um, it is what it is, you know, and and I think you can, you. But I'll do that. I'll, I I wrote about how I could find a meetup group. I could find all the attendees of the meetup group, and then I go back and find them in bulk on LinkedIn Recruiter, and I tag them as meetup or something like that. And then but so I, the audience would say, I saw you are here and on meetup, and you're interested mm -hmm. in in like you said this this. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Angular or something like that, yeah. you know, something that's specific that's not uh, even mentioned on their profile. But with, with using um, LinkedIn Recruiter as a CRM, what do you do with the people that don't have a LinkedIn profile? So it'll create a dummy. So it, well, so it does two things. It will, you can still import them. Mm -hmm. um, it creates a dummy profile when it says not matched or whatever. And unfortunately, there's no way to there's, there's no filter for that. So um, if it's a personal email address, then I get maybe 70, 80% match rate. Um, so, and, the, and there's 30% that I can still email, um, but I, I can't, I don't, I'll have to manually look it up. And that's where this would do the trick. I know the name, but I don't, and I, I made them the name, and I know they worked at some point in, they lived in fr France was the example, or they know JS was the example I used in the article. So I, I knew it was either that they're from France, or they, they're from Paris, or that they have no JS in their profile, and the first name, last name. And so you click on that, and, you know, you have a, you're not filling in the blanks every time and you're not just using the keywords. Um, you are using the keywords, but you're not just using the keywords. So, um, and you're not just searching for Node.js and then crossing your fingers. Yeah. And, and, and there's a, so it's, to me, it's time management. So what all I, I don't do outreach. I'm I've last time I talked and phone screened somebody was years ago that you can, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of sad. Um, but, you know, I enable the recruiters to do their job. I hand them on a silver platter and let them do the engagement because mm -hmm. that's what they do well. Um, 
speaking of, I spoke to somebody from a, a big enterprise company the other day, and he didn't understand that. that he, the pipeline, he said pipelining and engagement are the same thing. And I kindly disagree. Um, <laughs> I was like, those are two very unique skills. You know, I, I you know, some, they're, some, you know, some they're, of us do, do, yeah, do more of it, but go yeah. in circles. And then there's the formula one drivers that can turn in <laughs> right also. Um, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're very different skills. Um, both highly qualified, but, um, you know, they're not the same and, the, uh, this one size fits all approach and KPI approach um, is, is uh, you know, it's disheartening in some ways, um, but that's okay. There, there's, the, there's always the companies that see a little, um, see, it, see it a different way. Um, but good that, uh, good that this, that still exists. <laughs> exactly. Okay, uh, I think we're coming up to uh, optimal length. Um, thank you, Aaron, Sophia, for uh, coming back this week. Uh, we should be back next week, uh, same time, same station. Um, so until then, uh, if you have not signed up for Amazing Hiring Sourcing Challenge Hackathon for the 20th, make sure to do so. Uh, if you are in or near Barcelona and you have not signed up for Sophia and I's training, make sure you do so. Uh, I'll put links to both of them in uh, the, the, yeah, in the show description. Um, and other than that, have a very good weekend, everyone, and uh, see you all next week. Bye. Bye.